So that happened. Oh my god. Oh, lord of mercy. So, the Owl House just had its season 2 finale, and I'm just gonna say it. That was just casually one of the best episodes I've ever seen in a cartoon. I... I knew this show was amazing, but oh my god, I did not expect them to hit me with that. So, yeah, this is gonna be a more quick review, at least I hope. So, I'm not gonna really do any of my major preferencing. I've already explained that in my other episode of this show. And, um, let's just get right into it. Sorry if you haven't seen the show. What are you doing here? Just go start watching the show over and just come here. So, let's get right into it. This is King's Tide. So our episode begins with King once again intercepting a conversation between Emperor Bellows and the Collector through his dreams. The Collector is begging Bellows to free him from his prison, but Bellows is ensuring him he'll only free him after the draining spell is complete. King wakes up and we see that this episode takes place right where the last one left off, with Luce giving herself up to Kikimura to be taken to Emperor Bellows, and King, Amity, Willow, Gus, Hunter, and a redeemed Alidor all on their way to rescue Luz and help her beat Emperor Bellows. Tensions are of course high, but their palacemen all manage to work together to make all of them feel a bit better. I hope you enjoyed this moment of levity, because now the episode gets cranked up to 11 for the remainder of the runtime. We cut to the Day of Unity, where all the witches of the Isles are gathered around for the celebrations, as they all believe that on this day they will see an end to all wild magic. Unknown to them that all of this is a trick by Emperor Bellows, whose real name is Philip. Ha! As he's planning to use a draining spell to commit a mass witch genocide. Luckily, Ida, Rain, Lilith, Hootie, as well as the other members of the cats, have a plan to stop the spell. By having Ida pose as Rain to use her owl curse to corrupt the spell. But first, we get a nice little sweet scene between Ida and Rain. The curse will do its thing. I got this, Rainstorm, don't worry. Oh, don't say that. You know that will just jinx things. And jinx it it did, because they don't know that Philip knows about their plans, and has come up with his own way of stopping them. So Ida also tells Lilith and Hootie not to worry. Why? And she disguises herself as Rain as she, Darius, and Emberwolf head up to enact their plan. But Philip then swaps around the order of the coven heads. So that kind of throws an itty bitty wrench into the whole operation. As the draining spell begins, Philip leaves as he gets ready to head back to the human realm through his portal. But the collector is asking him to let him out of his prison that he promised. But Philip of course betrays him. <laughs> then Kikimura arrives with Luce, and after one of my favorite lines ever spoken towards Kikimura, Go find a hole to wither away in. Philip throws the prison of the collector off a bridge. And once Luce sees Philip again, the two of them begin their rematch. So we cut back to King and the others in the airship, as it turns out Odalia was really salty about the divorce as she sent other ships after them. We get a pretty cool air battle, as well as some nice winter moments, and yes, I think winter is the better name for the ship, but they inevitably all end up getting shot down. Meanwhile, the other Covenheads find out about Rain and Ida's plan and puts a stop to them, as the draining spell begins. Back with Luce, things aren't going too well with her, as Philip is, well, wiping the floor with her. Luckily, she's able to smooth talk her way out of petrification and tricks him into putting a sigil on. All the witches start realizing that Philip was tricking them, I just love Ray's expression here, and Philip, having a sigil himself, is also now being affected by the spell. Luce's original plan was to have Bellows then turn off the spell, but this is not a victory, it just made things worse. Uh, uh, no, I didn't need to sleep anyways. And then we get one of my personal favorite scenes of this episode, as we're now in King's perspective as he blinks in and out of consciousness, and this allows the show to get a lot of information at us in a short amount of time, because we don't have that much time with this show. We see that Hunter and Alador's sigils kicked in, 
Aldor stayed behind to fight off the remaining automatons, the kids managed to make their way to where everyone else is, they realized Luce is in the head, and all made their way there. And just in time too, as once again Luce was still not doing so good against Philip. So we get another awesome fight scene, you know your show's doing something right if you have a battle on a collapsing bridge. As sprinkled in, we get a few lore dumps, and a bit of trauma for Gus while we're at it. But King is pushed to the sidelines for this fight, as he ends up finding Kikimura, as she states that the only one who can stop the training spell is the Collector. She takes King down to where the prison of the Collector was tossed, passing by the remains of all the Grimwalkers that were the Golden Guards before Hunter. That's pretty messed up. Upon meeting the Collector, he states that he knows King, as King's father is the reason why he's in that prison in the first place, which also makes you realize there's probably a very specific reason why he put him there. But we don't have too much time to think about that, as King Pinky promises the Collector that if he helps him stop the draining spell, then he and everyone on the Boiling Isles will play a game called the Owl House with him. To which, the Collector agrees. While that's happening, Rain manages to save Ida by ripping off her arm so the sigil will not affect her. I love it when running gags become major plot points in shows. I don't know why, I just do. Also, I adore this transition. Mm, so beautiful. And then we get Mai and everyone else in the fandom with a functioning brain's favorite part of the episode. The Collector. What you playing? Yep, turns out this little boy is a little boy. Yeah, this little kid in dementia looking pajamas is basically an all-powerful god in the body of a nine-year-old. And then he does this to Philip. If you think that's overpowered, check out this. Wow, he moved the moon. Wow, he moved the moon. And then he states that if they're gonna play Owl House, they're gonna need an Owl House, as he starts to terraform the area and god knows where else to make what I can only assume to be his new playground. Willow realizes that the only way they can escape is by using the portal, and on their way to it, pieces of Philip's remains lands onto Hunter. This can't be good. But Luz wants to stay behind and save Ida as well as everyone else. But the Collector ain't gonna let King go without a fight, as King Pinky promised that he'd play with him. So, King pulls a Bobby the Bomb and sacrifices himself to get Luce and her friends through the portal. And all I can say is, I love this ending. Just seeing how they all react to what just happened and seeing Gus just break down crying after everything he saw, it just rips at your heartstrings. So with nowhere else to go, we got to Camila and V, and I see you and Boon Choi, you sneaky little Gamp you! As they get a knock at the door, and Camilla sees that her daughter Luce, as well as Amity, Willow, Gus, and Hunter, have come home. And as the episode rolls its credits, we see the remains of Philip, showing that he may be down, but he is far from out. Oh my god, what? What? Oh my god. So yeah, I love that episode. I think that was a brilliant season finale, and I think honestly it was perfectly paced. It was snappy. Everything felt perfectly paced, despite feeling pretty quick. But it's understandable, considering how we only have three 44-minute specials, so six episodes to fix everything. And that's why this episode kind of left certain things hanging. I think the biggest question on everybody's mind is, Where's Steve? Is he safe? Is he alright? But I trust Dana and her team will give us one hell of a finale. In the meantime, welcome back to the IAS, everyone. I can't do this! Not again! I'm your average bonehead Jay, and I wish you all good night.